Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Welcome especially those of you who are visiting us today. Thanks for coming. We pray that God will bless your worship with us. The kingdom of God does not operate like the world does. As we continue our focus of worship during this epiphany season on uncovered, how God uncovers things for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. The truth that's uncovered before us today is that what what the world calls good, God often calls evil. What the world would call bad, God often turns into blessings. We're going to see examples of that in our second lesson this morning in the life of St. Paul. We're going to hear Jesus speak more about that in our gospel this morning. As we begin our worship service this morning, we pray that God will bless all of us as we hear his word together and sing his praise. Let's join in our first hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God our Father and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is the second lesson that we heard a few minutes ago. St. Paul, by inspiration of God the Holy Spirit, wrote these words in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, dear friends. And they all lived happily ever after. Isn't that how every fairy tale ends, right? The the prince marries the beautiful girl, the, the poor peasants find a pot of gold. The children are rescued and the wicked witch gets what's common to her. And they all live happily ever after. I, I think a lot of people might get the impression that, that, that not only is that how it works in fairy tales, that's how it works in the Bible too. That, that in the Bible, everybody seems to live happily ever after. Think about the the gospel lessons that we've been hearing this epiphany season, some of the things that have happened. Like a, a, a bride and a groom run out of wine, but then Jesus supplies them miraculously with the finest wine, sparing them embarrassment. Peter's mother in law, suffering from a fever, is healed instantly. Peter and his fishing partners get a a, a miraculous catch of fish, more than they could ever have believed. And they all live happily ever after, right? It it, it seems maybe to some that, that, that people in the Bible never really faced any disappointments. Oh, you know, maybe a, a minor setback, a challenge or two, but instantly God always swooped in, performed some miracle, saved them, and then they all live happily ever after, Right? Nope, not even close. God's people face disappointment and challenges and and heartache and pain. And St. Paul's example to us this morning in 2 Corinthians, I think, gives dramatic evidence that the Bible is not a fairy tale where everybody just has a perfect life and lives happily ever after. Paul certainly faced problems and disappointment, just like we do. This morning, let's take a closer look at what Paul was facing and how God answered his prayers so that we might better understand what happens when Christians deal with disappointment. You know, if anyone thinks that that, that the Bible is a, you know, just a bunch of fairy tales that everyone had an easy life. They, they certainly don't know anything about the Apostle Paul. In the previous chapter of 2 Corinthians, Paul gave a lengthy list of, of hardships that he had faced 
as an apostle. He wasn't trying to, trying to elicit uh, sympathy. He was simply demonstrating to the Corinthian congregation that he was not in it for the glory and the money like some fake apostles were. So Paul mentioned things that he had faced like how many times he had been beaten with rods and whipped. How he had been stoned. They tried to execute him by stoning him and left him dead, but he, he wasn't dead. How many times he had been imprisoned in, in shipwrecks. And the list goes on and on and on. But besides all of that suffering that Paul underwent because of his faith and because of persecutions, Paul then mentions something else. He says he had a, a thorn in his flesh. We don't know exactly what it was, but it, it certainly seems as if it was some kind of a, a physical ailment, a, a, a chronic condition that caused him pain and suffering. Some speculate that maybe Paul had uh, chronic malaria because of some of the swampy, low-lying areas that he conducted his mission work with a lot of malaria-breeding mosquitoes. Others point to the fact that a few times in his epistles, Paul makes reference to his eyesight as if he were, had problems with that and, and perhaps thinking he had glaucoma or cataracts or some other eye problem. Or, or maybe it was just simply all of those beatings that he had undergone that maybe, maybe he never really fully healed up and recovered from them and that's what was causing him problems. But what Paul was facing isn't that important. How he faced them, how he dealt with them is. Paul's thorn in the flesh is something that he got help with. Uh, certainly, he, he must have, have, have gotten uh, uh, physical help, whatever you could get. Uh, 2,000 years ago, me medicine wasn't what it is today, but he did have a, a, his own physician, St. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, was one of Paul's mission partners, and he was indeed a physician. So undoubtedly, Luke tended to Paul's problems as best he could, but Paul had a different source of help. He had God, and he turned to him for help. Paul says three times he pleaded with the Lord to take that away from him. Don't get the impression that when Paul says three times, it was just you know, three, three uh, brief muttered prayers that he happened to offer, and then he gave up. Uh, more likely, it was three times of extended periods of prayer devoted to pleading with God to take that, that, that thorn in his flesh, that, that chronic pain that he was facing away from him. Paul knew where to turn to, persistently, again and again and again. How about us? Well, we probably will never face what Paul did. We're not going to get beaten probably and whipped and imprisoned for our faith. I pray not. But I'll bet if we think about it, we all have a, a thorn or two in our flesh. What's your thorn? M maybe like Paul, maybe you have chronic pain that you have to deal with on a daily basis. Or maybe it's a painful relationship that's your thorn. Or, or an addiction that you struggle with. So what do you do? Paul gives us an example of what to do. Pray persistently. You know, Jesus in our gospel spoke in these, 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 these it almost sounds like a contradiction. You know, if you're, if you're hungry, if you're sad, if you're, you're facing problems and pain, he says, you're blessed. How so? Well, one of the blessings that comes from being a follower of Christ is knowing whom to turn to when we're facing those issues. Our Lord. About 30 or so years ago, uh, a, a, a man by the name of, a, he's a Jewish rabbi, uh, Rabbi Kirshner, uh, wrote a book, a bestseller that was called when, when Bad Things Happen to Good People. And in, in that book, he, he basically said that uh, life is little more than a series of chaotic events 
completely out of control. And he did recognize the presence of God, but more or less he said, God either is powerless or just chooses not to really intervene, not that much. Wow. What a bleak outlook and what a wrong outlook on life. God is not powerless. He created the universe. God is not uncaring. He gave up his own son for you. Turn to him. Persistently, again and again and again, with your thorns and challenges and temptations and sorrows. And listen. Listen for the answer. You know, sometimes the answer that God gives when we take our needs to Him in prayer is a quick and clear yes. Think, for instance, of that miracle that we heard about a few weeks back at the wedding at Cana when Jesus' mother Mary turned to Him and asked Him basically to, to help this poor couple out who had run out of wine. And Jesus did. But often the answer isn't quite as quick or as clear as when Jesus said the servants pour water into the stone, stone vessels and they scoop some out and it was wine instantly. Often those answers to our prayers maybe take a little longer than that and maybe aren't always so loud and clear. Think, for instance, of the prophet Elijah. And the disappointments he was facing, he was so discouraged and depressed and disappointed, he went out and hid in a cave. But then God said, I'm going to pass by, so come on out of there. And then there was a mighty wind that shattered the rocks, but that wasn't God. And then there was fire and an earthquake, but those clear, unmistakable phenomena, that, that wasn't God's voice either. God's voice came after that in the form of a whisper. Isn't that the way God often answers our prayers too? Maybe he doesn't beat you over the head with the answer. It isn't always as obvious or as instantaneous as we might like it. But he does answer them. I think that's kind of how Paul's answer to his pleading with God was. It's possible that God revealed this answer directly to Paul you know, that he heard the voice of God. But maybe more likely, Paul understood God, he heard God's answer to his pleading, his prayers, only after a lot of, um, not just soul searching, but probably more importantly, scripture searching, that he came to the answer that God had given to him. When you take your needs, your thorns to God in prayer, listen, listen carefully. Listen closely as he speaks in his word to you. Sometimes it's when you are reading and studying your Bible on your own privately. Sometimes maybe it's when, when somebody shares it with you, teaches or preaches it to you. I can't tell you how many times in my ministry I have had people come up to me after a service and say, Pastor, how did you know that that's exactly what I needed to hear this morning? No, I didn't know. But God did. Listen. Listen as God answers your prayers. So how? how? How does he answer? How did he answer St. Paul's prayer? Well, some would say the answer God gave to St. Paul was a major disappointment. But Paul didn't look at it that way. So how did God answer that prayer of Paul? when he pleaded that God would take that thorn away from him, God said, no. But God wasn't done with his answer. He didn't stop at no. He went on to say, but, but, I'm going to give you something better. So what better did Paul receive? What blessing did Paul receive even through that, that painful condition he was going through? Well, for one thing, Paul recognized that it kept them humble. 
You imagine St. Paul, a, a man who wrote more books of the New Testament than any other person, that God, the Holy Spirit, directly, directly inspired to write these. And, and, and just before our, our lesson this morning, St. Paul talked about how God even gave him a little glimpse of heaven itself. That's the surpassingly great revelations Paul was speaking of in our lesson. How easy it would have been for Paul to become conceited and to think that he was better than other people because God gave him the, these amazing revelations. And, and therefore, to turn the spotlight away from his Lord and on himself. But God kept that from happening. That, that thorn in his flesh was a reminder to St. Paul of his own frailties and weaknesses and a reminder to turn to the one who gave him real strength. That's why he could say, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. It sounds like a contradiction, like what Jesus was saying in our gospel, that you know, when, you're, when you're sad, that's when you're blessed. That doesn't make sense. Well, it does make sense in the kingdom of God. St. Paul knew that he truly was blessed. He was strong even when he was reminded of his weaknesses because he was reminded that his strength came from the Lord. God answers your prayers too. And sometimes those answers are a clear and quick yes. And I'm sure that all of us can think of many times in our lives when God has indeed answered your prayers just like that. But he doesn't always, does he? Sometimes his answer, like St. Paul, is a no. But he's never done with no. His no is always followed by a but, but, I'm going to give you something even better. As we turn to him persistently in prayer and listen to his answer carefully, he gives us those answers that we need. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. He gives us what we need by sometimes allowing us to continue with whatever that problem or pain is in our lives, but he always gives us what we need when we need it. Like Paul, maybe, reminding us that our help comes from the Lord rather than from our own strength by giving us the strength to bear up to whatever it is that he allows in our lives. Sometimes we understand that. Like Paul, maybe sometimes we see, okay, that makes sense, God, now I get it. Other times, maybe we'll have to wait till we see things from the perspective of eternity when we're with him in heaven before we realize the blessings that he gives us. But he always gives us blessings, whether it's a blessing in our life or a blessing in other people's lives. Think of another blessing God gave to Paul through that thorn in his flesh. We are being blessed by it right now as we listen to what Paul wrote and as we find strength to bear up to our thorns. I wonder if Paul ever imagined that almost 2,000 years after he first wrote those words, there would be Christians all over the world still reading them and still finding strength in them as they bear up to their disappointments and thorns. Maybe the... Thorns God allows to remain in your life give you opportunities. Opportunities to witness your faith to somebody who needs to hear it too. But whatever it is, the answer is always there and it's always what's best. And they all lived happily ever after. Well, let's be real. The life of a Christian is often filled with disappointments and problems and pain. But we always have a Lord who's with us, who gives us exactly what we need, who listens to our prayers, who loves us very much, and who answers our prayers. And the life of a Christian regardless of disappointments and problems and pain we feel, we live this life knowing that one day we will be with our Lord where there are no more problems, no more pains, no more thorns, with Him forever in heaven. 
come to think of it. We do live happily ever after, don't we? Amen.